Hey guys, Jamie and Jeremy from Guildbrook Farm and holy moly, it's been a while since uh, we sat down and had a chat with you guys. Welcome to The Dirt. Uh, for those of you guys that are new to the channel, The Dirt is where we share a little bit about why we do what we do, why we think what we think, and today's video is going to be all about the house build. What has been going on the last couple months, why you haven't seen videos from us, and uh, what you can expect from us going forward. Yeah, welcome to our little hole in the dirt now. So what you see behind us, if you watched the last video, is uh, what is going to be the home of our future basement. And uh, it may not look very attractive to you, but to us it's absolutely gorgeous. This has been uh, two years in the making as of next month. Yeah, we will have been here for two years and trying to build this house for two years. And we've just encountered all kinds of roadblocks along the way um, and over the last couple months we've had some good things happening some bad things happening and um, I guess we're going to just talk to you guys a little bit about that um, one of the good things is my art business Guildbrook Art um, has been flourishing I'm very happy that uh, it has been doing really really well I've been working on a lot of custom pet portraits for as commissions uh, I've been working with a lot of vet offices in the area um, and that's doing really well um, I also started working on people portraits um, sure. and even just at trying out a little bit of landscapes as well so if you guys are interested in checking that out go to gilbrickart.com or on my instagram channel at gilbrickart i am currently booking for christmas and i do book up fairly quick and my time is actually going to be really limited with this house build so i'm only taking so many commissions um this this season but if you guys are interested in that go check that out i do have a new gift size it's five by seven it's matted so you can see that on my website so that's the good news yep now, this this summer the summer has been very challenging. Um, I guess uh, let's see. As far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, last fall I think it was I don't know August or so uh, when I was clearing trees here and cutting up firewood, I ended up getting a couple tick bites, and one of which was kind of concerning because it had the uh, bullseye on it, and so I started doping up with uh, antibiotics. <laughs> antibiotics for a month. Uh, and I think that did the trick because I didn't end up getting Lyme disease, thank goodness. But uh, that was a little scary and nasty and gross. I didn't and that took a long time to heal. It did. It took, heck, a few months yeah. to for the bite to heal. Uh, so that was a little nerve-wracking, but, you know, uh, we're beyond that. And then, well, the, the actual bad thing that happened was when I was up here in March or April, right about the time when we were building this well house, uh, I was finishing up, you know, cutting, splitting all this firewood that we'd cleared from this hilltop. And it was right about the last couple logs that I had to do. And I lifted one up the wrong way and slipped my back, slipped a disc in my back. And it's been three months, four months of pain since then. Um, been to a chiropractor, been to a doctor, and, you know, it's just going to take time to heal. Some probably take a year to heal. But that has limited my physical ability and my mobility uh, and has changed a lot about this plan because originally originally I was going to do a lot of this build myself and now it's kind of difficult to I don't think I can do that um, and so that's where we're at that's how we got to here there's a couple of the not so fun things that happened also um, I am on my if you guys follow me on Instagram you know and, and the the uh, the blog um, I just had my third eye surgery uh, about four weeks ago. I'm still healing from it, but um, I, if you see me without my glasses on, it's really bright today, but I, I walk around looking like I'm stoned. <laughs> my eyes are red all the time. I still have stitches in my eyes that are dissolving, um, but uh, I went from a I went from a pretty bad place where I had a pretty bad uh, double vision, wasn't even able to walk down the driveway because um, of the vertigo, but I was luckily able to have surgery and correct that. It was, you know, the scariest of all three surgeries just because they you know they're still not sure what is causing it um and so that that part was concerning and if you guys are interested in reading about that you can hop on the blog um, but that so far has been healing up pretty well so luckily that worked out but that's where we've been i mean it's just kind of been one thing after another after another and to be perfectly honest uh there have been several moments there where we were just deciding you know whether or not you know this was kind of fate saying you know you guys need to rethink what you're doing you're not meant to be out here you're not meant to be doing this uh, between that and all the contractor issues which we'll talk about in a minute but 
You know, we're just like, either this is a test of perseverance <laughs> or this is like a major red flag or multiple red flags saying, you guys don't belong out here. And yeah. so we've been trying to weigh that option and figure out which one is it. <laughs> this is a test of perseverance. Or sh you know, should we should we pack up and go? And there were a few moments there where we were we were pretty close. And I think if somebody would have walked up to us with a check and said, hey, I'll buy your property, I think we would have taken it and, and bailed just because... Yeah. It's been tough. Yeah. I never expected uh, this to be such a difficult thing. This has turned out to be probably the most difficult project I've ever undertaken. Uh, and I just don't think it should be. I don't, I don't, it doesn't need to be, but it is what it is. Uh, if you've been following us for a while, um, then you know that we've changed where we were going to put the house, um, the type of house and all that, a couple different times. And then we, when I finally started clearing this last year, we had decided that we were going to build a tim timber frame up here. And then... Uh, once I really got into it, I decided that I didn't like the way the sips, we were going to use sips to wrap the timber frame. I didn't like the way that was going to turn out with porches and, and the value versus the cost ended up not being there for, for what I was trying to do. Um, and I was going to do that build myself. Uh, and then when I ended up injuring my back, I decided, all right, I'm going to take the same floor plan and I'm going to redesign the house to be stick built. Uh, and we'll find a builder to do it for us. And then we ran into those issues where we couldn't find a builder. Well, he actually went so far as to actually have it approved by an engineer. Yep, had it. So we paid all that money out to have I did all the drawings and everything and sent it to an engineer and he did load calculations and all that and gave me an, a, a stamped set of engineered drawings for a stick built house that we are no longer going to build. And the reason being? Well, the reason being, um, couldn't find a builder. Um, a lot of the builders, well, most all the good builders are booked out a year in advance, six houses behind. Um, and and I, I need to clarify that it's not only that they are booked out, it's not like we're impatient and we can just get added onto the end of their waiting list. They have no interest in adding us onto their waiting list. There there was no, hey, we'll we'll get to you in six months or, you know, you know we'll put you on the list for a year. It's There's a couple reasons for that. And that is that they are able to build in a more densely populated area and they can do multiple projects in the same area. Uh, it's hard to get materials and people up here. Um, they, a lot of builders don't like to work with a homeowner if they are trying to do a lot of the work themselves because, uh, well, a couple reasons. One, they get paid based on a cost plus model. So it's not really in their best interest to do work at the least cost materials because they mark up everything. So, uh, it, the other issue is if they pull a permit to build your house, they have they want to do it turnkey because they're responsible for that project until the certificate of occupancy is issued if the building permit's in their name. So they're not going to pull a permit to build you a shell and then wait around for you to f maybe someday finish the inside before you can get a certificate of occupancy and kind of get it off, get get that liability off of there. And just to clarify, we, we are just trying to get a shell up right now. We we want to do all the finish work inside ourselves right. um, from a cost standpoint because we are building this debt free for those of you guys that are new. Yeah, so uh, running into the challenges of, of finding uh, a builder or a general contractor, and, you know, and then you also have the same issues with uh, subcontractors. Mm -hmm. They like to work with a general contractor that uh, they don't have to worry about explaining things to the homeowner or working with a homeowner to figure out materials or telling the homeowner I need this many bricks or this much mortar and this much sand or whatever they just they work with these contractor these general contractors enough that they show up on the job site all their stuff is there and they just go to work and they bounce and get paid uh, and, and they've got months and months of work lined up with these guys that they work with all the time so that's a challenge uh, once we went down this road and talked to hundreds of people and exhausted all those options we also looked at what are the possibilities of doing a modular home? Uh, we called several companies. Yeah, having one factory built and then delivered here. Uh, most would not return our phone calls. The couple that did... Uh, didn't service this area. Just didn't deliver their products to this area. Um, it's like so, we're in a black hole. <laughs> yeah, so modulars are out. And so that brought us all down to where we are today. And, uh, just, and just to <coughs> clarify, a lot of people are like, well, why don't you just get a log home kit and just put that up yourselves mm. and whatnot? Well, those don't work in this area. I've um, known several people with log homes and yeah. with, with, with a lot of wood, uh, boring bees and ants and uh, the humidity and... A lot of maintenance. A lot of maintenance. And it, it's... Not worth the investment. Yeah, you're, you're replacing materials 
a lot quicker than you, w you would want to be. So what are we building? And we're really excited about this because we think this is the right build for us and especially in this location with this climate and with all of the bugs that we have. Yeah, so I went back to the drawing board. I took our engineering approved stick built house. Okay, it's stink bug season. They stink are Stink bugs, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Freaking annoying. Uh, I took our plans, I revised them and we are now going to build a insulated concrete form house. That is, if you're not familiar with that, they're called ICFs. Those are concrete forms made out of uh, EPS foam and they're different widths. So basically we'll stack Lego blocks made out of foam and those will become our wall forms. We're going to pour a 8 inch thick, 10 foot high basement wall that is insulated concrete. Then we're going to build a floor. <clears throat> then we're going to come back and pour an, a six inch, uh, eight foot high first floor made out of insulated concrete forms. And then we're going to stick build everything on top of that. That'll allow us to quickly get a shell put up. <laughs> Seriously. That'll allow us to more quickly get a shell put up uh, because it's one pour instead of stick framing all, all whole kinds of stuff. Uh, and that there are a whole lot of advantages to building with ICF versus stick build. Uh, I'll probably get into that with uh, in another video as we get going with this. But what's the R value on it? The R value is way beyond code for sure. And uh, I mean, it's solid reinforced concrete like a bunker, so it's sound almost soundproof or sound reduced. So you can riff on your guitar. You can all just night? wail on your guitar in the basement if you want. Nobody's going to hear you. It's not going to echo across the mountains. Um, you know, insulation, there's no thermal breaks. It's one solid sandwich of foam and concrete. So you have consistent insulation and moisture control. Uh, so you can heat it and cool it very efficiently. Uh, there are all a ton of advantages to it. Um, and the cost to build using ICF versus stick build isn't much more at all when you factor all that stuff in um, because your insulation is built into the, the whole unit. It's not a separate function. Uh, but that's kind of the plan is uh, to go from here. We're going to finish clearing some trees tomorrow and we're going to finish digging this basement. We still have a little bit to dig out and we got to clean this up. And then I'll be able to get up here and start laying out footings. Um, and we'll bring you along when we do that. And uh, yeah, I, I've ordered all of the ICF and I need to order some rebar. I'm going to use about just, 100 just sticks to clarify, of rebar, can number you, four and number five. You are general contracting this yourself? I am general contracting this myself because I couldn't find anyone else to do it and at least I know it'll be done the way I want it done. The only caveat to that is that when we do that in this county I think they give you two inspections that you're allowed to fail before they say all right you need to get a licensed general contractor because you kind of don't know what you're doing. So we got to make sure that doesn't happen, but yeah. it's pretty straightforward. These guys at the county are real cool, uh, real real nice to work with, and uh, there's not a lot of building going on that is using this this method, using ICF, uh, at least in this area. Our neighbor has one, so we know what it's going to look like, and we know the quality of the mm -hmm. finished product. It's just that he built his house like 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, if you're used to traditional stick built construction and platform framing, this is going to be a different type of project because it's just, they're built differently. It's more like commercial build, <coughs> right? It's kind of a, yeah, kind of a cross between a commercial and residential build. It's a, it's a residential build with commercial materials and techniques, I guess. In, and in one thing I'm really excited about is the porches, which are also going to be concrete um, rather than having to worry about staining decks, you know, Replacing sanding. wood. Yeah, that kind of thing. Or paying, uh, what's the, uh, trek, trex. Trex, yeah, like yeah, composite decking. Really Doesn't expensive. Really right, we're going to do concrete. So everything's going to be basically bug proof, which is really, really nice. Um, mm -hmm. And as low maintenance as possible. Again, we are building what is our retirement home. So we are investing everything that we have, quite literally, into building retirement home for us so we want to make sure that that's as low maintenance as possible not for us just now but also for us you know we're 70 80 years old we don't want to have to you know, have to worry about staining decks and stuff like that yeah so, so it's been a long time coming i know uh, everybody a lot of our newer subscribers have subscribed because they're looking for you know what's going on with this house build that's what they're interested in and 
it's been kind of as frustrating for us as it has been for you guys. Like, what's going on? Well, yeah, I wish we knew. We would like to know what's going on, but uh, I think we have a plan now. Yeah. Um, it seems like we're finally, you know, getting out of this, getting out of this rut, rut that we're in and moving forward, getting a little bit of momentum because we did get the phone call that some of our contractors are ready to go. So we do hope if everything goes right, which, mm -hmm. you know, we're not counting on it, but if everything goes right, we should be under roof by the end of this year. Oh, that's a big, yeah. I mean, I want to have footers in the ground this month, and then next month I want to be pouring walls and framing the roof and everything no later than mid-December. If we can do that, if the weather's cooperating, uh, we will. We'll yeah. be under roof uh, by the end of the year. The other cool thing is uh, we got our well water test results back uh, a month or so ago. Everything's perfect, except we have a little bit of high iron. By a little, a lot. Well, it is pretty high in iron, but that's the only thing that there's no bacteria or anything in the water. The water's beautiful and it tastes good. So we are hauling water from here now down to the trailer. Which is a good thing because uh, pretty much our seep spring water has gone not so nice. Um, yeah, it's all gross. It's like yeah, red, it's red just and gross really really gotten sludgy i was all like you turn on the faucet you know you get the red yeah mud coming out that's not really nice when I mean, even though we're filtering it through the berkey the berkey's getting clogged up all the time and mm -hmm. yeah we still use it for things like washing laundry and pretty much just everything but everything's gonna end up getting tossed at some point because it's just all getting ruined but yeah. it is what it is hey, some of you guys want to know the nitty-gritty of living off grid or living at least you know remotely and that's some of the stuff that's happening you know you just uh yeah I'm just real happy with this well though I mean we spent a lot of money on it and I'm glad that the water came back it like, tastes good it's great it's sweet, sweet water it's awesome water so uh good stuff all right so we have a couple videos coming out soon hopefully with the footers um we are hoping that we can get this concrete poured before it turns into freezing temperatures we do have a pretty short window to get everything poured and set up here um Before and it's cold yep and if that we miss that we're you know probably won't be able to do it till spring so we will put out videos as we have them uh, if you don't hear from us in between it's just because we can't get people lined up um but yeah look for those videos coming out if you aren't already subscribed to make sure you get notified hit the bell button you have to hit the bell button to be notified of when our videos come out yep i think that's all what else uh, and that's it yeah <clears throat> We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for hanging in with us and uh, see you then. See you in the next video.